Hi, I'm Jack. I'm going to run through some very quick and easy checks you can do on fire extinguishers. If you live in a uh, nice civilised part of the world, you'll have somebody regularly coming around and doing these checks for you. If you live in a less, uh, less accessible place or more remote place in New Zealand, you're going to struggle to have somebody coming around on a regular basis. And by the time they do come around, they're going to say oh, everything's knackered. So here's some checks that you can do yourself. Uh, the most popular, almost common fire extinguisher in use in New Zealand is an ABE type. It's a multi-purpose fire extinguisher. It can be used on just about every type of fire. You won't use it on a fat fire and um, or burning oil, burning cooking oil type fire because that will tend to spread it somewhat. But just about every other fire that you have, from electrical to carbonaceous, which is burning wood, um, bits of paper, things like that, uh, a fuel fire, petroleum based fires, you can use a multi-purpose ABE type fire extinguisher. The ingredients are monomonium phosphate, which is an agricultural fertilizer. It's slightly alkaline, so if you spray it on electrical contacts on a switchboard to put out a fire, you've done the right thing. But you'll need an electrician to come around and replace most of the stuff on the switchboard because the alkaline nature of the powder will cause corrosion on the contacts. So let's get straight into it. Um, the first thing we need to check is make sure the gauge on the fire extinguisher is in the green. The needle needs to be in the green. Now if the needles are not in the green, dispose of the fire extinguisher. While you're looking at the gauge, make sure it's not broken, because if it's broken, a needle might be in the gray, green, but it's not actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So um, check that, pretty easy to look at. Next one is the safety seal. So the safety seal is on the pin. In this case, it's a green bit of, I'll get that thing out of the way, and you can see the pin here, and there's a, a seal. It looks like a cable tie. That's a safety seal. Make sure that's intact. If it's not intact, um, then you need to have a look in the discharge tube and make sure there's no traces of powder has come out. If there's any traces of powder have come out of there, then throw away the fire extinguisher and dispose of it. It doesn't matter what the gauge is saying, uh, gauges can lie. So if the safety seal is damaged, then there's a, and the tube has got powder in it, then the, you can't trust that fire extinguisher again anymore. So you need to throw it away, dispose of it and replace it. Next up, we're going to check that the operating mechanism is okay. So we're going to make sure this pin moves a little bit within the restraints or confines of the safety seal. We can pull it out a little bit, push it in, push it out. Make sure it moves freely. And we're going to make sure that there's no corrosion around the handle causing that to be uh, ineffective. Or make sure there's no damage, make sure there's no damage there so it can't operate. If any of those things are, are failing your check, dispose of the fire extinguisher. It's not worth the risk. Um, we're checking the extinguisher body next. So we're looking for damage on the body. Make sure it hasn't got any um, knocks, things like that, which can make it uh, dangerous. And then we're also going to check the date of manufacture. So on most extinguishers, that's written along the bottom somewhere. If it's got a skirt at the bottom for it to stand on, it's probably stamped on the skirt. It's a bit hard to find. Uh, on this particular extinguisher, it's actually stamped on the neck. And that's even harder to see. But you'll see, if I can get the camera, I think it's in the right place, you'll see there's some markings there on the neck of the extinguisher. And on this extinguisher they say 0516. So 0516, I'll just check that. Oh, 0518 says. 0518. So this is uh, March 2023. 8 and 5 is 3, so it's got 2 months left of its life. Now, it's fine if you're going to replace it within 2 months. But if you're doing a check for, it for, the, for the year, you need to replace that extinguisher because it's going to be out of its pressure test date within 2 months. So you can't say, oh yeah, that extinguisher is good for another year, because it is not. Now in New Zealand, extinguisher bodies are under has no legislation. They're a pressure cylinder. Your gas barbecue bottle at home, every 10 years you have to have that pressure tested. Okay, fire extinguishers, they're under that same legislation. 
but for them it's every five years. The reason being is that what's inside fire extinguishers generally is quite aggressive. It uh, oxidizes the inside of the cylinders. So that's why they're a lot less. It's a five year period. If it's sold a fuel truck or something like that, that period actually gets halved. So, most of you guys looking at this, lazies looking at this, you'll be doing it for uh, your own vehicles and the buildings that you're working in and living in. So, every five years, the extinguisher needs to be pressure tested or the cylinder needs to be pressure tested. Now, you'll find some people in New Zealand who do that, but based on my personal experience, you're actually fooling the client if you try and do that. Because it doesn't matter who does the refilling of the fire extinguishers after being pressure tested, I see double the failure rate. So by the double the failure rate, I mean the gauge has gone out of the green. They lose their pressure. It's very tricky to get a good seal when you're working with very fine powder. All you need is a little bit of fine powder in the wrong place and the O-ring doesn't seal properly or the valve doesn't seal properly. So what do we do with extinguishers in New Zealand? If you're sensible, You'll, have the, you'll send the extinguisher away for recycling. The metal can be reused somewhere and the powder can be used as agricultural fertilizer or it could go back into another fire extinguisher at a manufacturing facility. But you as the end user dispose of the fire extinguisher appropriately and get another fire extinguisher. So that's the body of the fire extinguisher. Next up, we need to check that the powder is free to move. So powder inside these things, modern ammonium phosphate, agricultural fertilizer, it cakes. By caking, I mean it forms a solid mass one end. So the way to check that is balance it on your fingers. Right, so you're standing it up, and then you lie it horizontal, and you find the balance point on your fingers. Now it should be around the middle. So there's the balance point there. Okay, now I'm going to turn it upside down, invert it, and turn it back again. And the balance point, if it's still the same, it means the powder is caked up the or down the bottom end. Now this one I've freed up already. So if I turn it that way, balance points there quite nicely. If I turn it upside down, the balance point is no longer there quite nicely. It's shifted closer to the neck of the fire extinguisher, which is good. So how do we free it up if it isn't free? Rubber mallet. I need to do this and you'll hear a tone as the powder changes from one end to the other. So I'm hitting it at the bottom. And with it inverted, when the powder goes to the other end, it's changed its tone. So the tone has gone deeper. If you've started with a cylinder that doesn't have free powder, even when it's inverted and you're tapping the bottom, as the powder frees up, you'll notice the tone changes. The same way the tone changed as I was tapping at the bottom and then turned around. But if you start like this, and the powder's already, or it's all stuck, up, stuck at the bottom, even though it's inverted, and you start tapping, it'll be lighter in tone or a higher pitch. And then when the powder frees up, it'll go deeper in pitch. Typically it does anyway. But you know how to check the balance. Checking that balance is a good way to make sure the powder is free. So we've done quite a few things here. We've looked at the gauge. We've checked the safety seal. We've checked the, checked the operating mechanism and the uh, pin. Make sure the pin's free to move and the trigger's free to move. And we've checked to make sure the powder is free. So once we've got all those things ticked off, then we can punch. Now, in the standard it says a number two punch, so I punch with a number two written on it, and it punches a hole, and you put it in, put the mark or the hole in the appropriate place on here. Now, I'm going to have to turn this around to get it looking right, and this is looking at a mirror, so like a mirror, so hopefully it comes out right. Um, but we put it for the year, and the month. Now over on this end here, it says test pressure. That's the year for a pressure test. Now go back to pressure testing, uh, dry powder extinguishers. In my opinion, based on my experience, you're better off not to get them pressure tested. 
other extinguishers such as carbon dioxide, wet chemical and foam and water, yes it makes sense. Dry powder, no it does not. Okay, so then it gets punched with a number two. If you don't have a number two, that's all right. Mark it if you have to with a pencil, with a uh, felt tip or something like that to show that it's been checked. And when do you recheck it? Well, if it's a building extinguisher, every 12 months. And if it's a vehicle extinguisher, every six months. Why? Well, heat and vibration cause the powder to pack faster. The more molecular movement, and you get molecular movement with heat, the more molecular movement, then the faster it packs. And you tapping it with a hammer is not just vibration, that's actually giving it a big shock and that frees the powder up. Okay, any questions, send me an email, jack at hboss.co.nz. Talk to you, bye-bye.